Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hoekstra. Last week started off with the SRM 741 contest from Top Coder on Tuesday. On Friday, we had the start of the Code Chef Long Challenge, as well as the Facebook Hacker Cup Finals. On Saturday, we had from Leak Code the weekly Leak Code Contest 109. And then on Sunday morning, we had the finals of the Lift Level 5 Challenge. And throughout the week, we also had from Hacker Earth the October Circuits. Taking a look at the top 10 leaderboards from the contest last week, we didn't have any individuals finishing on multiple leaderboards from what I could tell, but we did have some familiar names. So in the Lead Code contest, we had Yubo Wenok in first place, in second Yui, and in third Limpanda. And in Division 1 of the Top Coder 741 SRM contest, we had in first FJZZQ 2002, in second XUDYH, in third Neil Wu, in fourth Tourist, and in fifth Petra. Congratulations to Tourist who finished in first place in the Lift Level 5 Challenge. In second was Scott Wu and in third was Ekner Walla. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And we also had a ton of other big names uh, in the finals in the top 10 as well as uh, some familiar names in the Division 1 contest that went along with the finals. Uh, in first was Raid Woosh, in second MNVV Mar, currently ranked first in the Code Forces site, uh, and third was Bank. On Friday, we had the finals of the Facebook Hacker Cup, and here are the results of that. So congratulations to Mikhail Ip Ipanov, who goes by the handle LHIC, of course, which we're very familiar with. And uh, Makoto, who finished in second, his handle is RNG underscore 58. And in third was Andrew He. So I made a table that sort of converted uh, the finishers to their handles. I wasn't able to find Andrew He. So if any of you, uh, know this individual's handle, uh, post a comment in the section down below. And from these top 10, I just want to point out that three of them will be competing in the TCO 18 contest, which is happening uh, not in the upcoming week, but the week afterwards. And uh, Top Coder just released their online broadcast schedule, which you can uh, see here. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Uh, but they'll be broadcasting both the semifinals and the finals, as well as uh, some of the other contests that aren't uh, the algorithm based ones. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. And in general, uh, I haven't covered these too regularly uh, since I started this channel back in January, but starting in 2019, I plan to uh, cover these as well as some solutions to some of the problems that are uh, in these contests uh, going forward. Yeah, so starting in 2019. So the biggest contests probably at the top here are the Top Coder Open, the Facebook Hacker Cup, and Google Code Jam. But it seems like there are other contests like the Lyft Level 5 Challenge that are starting to pop up and these all have on-site uh, finals so uh, Facebook's I believe was in Menlo Park on Friday Lyft's was in Palo Alto so those are both in Silicon Valley uh, Top Coder and Google Code Jam, they have locations that change from year to year. So uh, the Top Coder, the TCO 2018 is being hosted, I believe, in Houston, Texas. And the Google Code Jam finals, they took place in August in Toronto, actually, where I used to work. Um, so going forward, like I said, in 2019, I plan to cover sort of the major contests and I'll try to keep track of contests that have on-site finals that are starting to pop up that are going to be hosted by different companies. So look forward to that. In today's video, I'll be covering the solution to problem two from the leak code contest number 109 entitled Night Dialer. And I will explain why there is a Google logo in the top right hand corner uh, after I cover the solution. The problem states a chess knight can move as indicated in the chess diagram below. This time we place our chess knight on any numbered key on a phone pad indicated above and the knight makes n-1 hops. Each hop must be from one key to another numbered key. Each time it lands on a key including the initial placement of the knight it presses the number of that key pressing n digits total. How many distinct numbers can you dial in this manner? Since the answer may be large output the answer modulo 10 to the 9th plus 7. And note that for this problem the constraints of n is that it is going to be less than 5000. 
So let's take a look at uh, some of the examples that Leak Code provided us with. So here are the three examples. They just give us the three possible, the first three possible values for n, which are one, two, and three, obviously. Uh, for the input of 1, uh, the answer is 10, which is pretty straightforward. There are 10 different keys on your keypad, so you can construct 10 different numbers by just clicking each one of those uh, keys. For an input of 2, it gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, the answer is 20, and if you write them out, it's as follows. Uh, so things you'll note here is that there's no number that starts with 5, and there are uh, two numbers that start with each digit except for uh, 4 and 6. Each of those have 3, 4, 0, 4, 3, and 4, 9, and then 6, 0, 6, 1, and 6, 7. So let's take a look at how we were able to construct these 20 numbers. So here is our keypad on the left, and what we're going to do is start with 0 and then work our way up to 9 and take a look at um, using the move of the knight, which is you know either 2 up and 1 over, or 2 over and 1 up or down, uh, seeing how we can move from keypad or one key to another key. So starting with 0, uh, you can see that we can uh, move up 2 and then either left 1 or right 1 to get us 4 or 6. So we're going to keep track in this sort of right keypad of all of the uh, keys that you can get to um, that lead to this key. So the, the key number 4, uh, at this moment we know that 0 leads to that key. So key 4 depends on uh, key 0 at this moment. And so if we take a look at 1, uh, we can see that can get to 6 to 8. And you can see that these correspond to our numbers up here. 0 uh, after the 0, we have 0, 4, 0, 6. And then for 1, we have 1, 6, 1, 8. And then we're just going to go through this. So 2 leads to 7, 9. 3 leads to 4, 8. Uh, 4 leads to 3, 9, and 0. 5 does not lead to anything. 6 leads to 1, 7, and 0. Uh, 7 leads to 2 and 6. 8 leads to 1 and 3. 9 leads to 4 and 2. So this is just, you know, purely looking at the keypad and then if, imagining if you had a rook or a knight, how uh, you could move. And so now we have this grid basically of dependencies. For each key, we uh, know which keys, uh, you know, starting at that key can we get to. So to get to key 1, we need to be in either key 6 or 8. To get to key 2, we need to be on either uh, key 7 or 9. And then using this information, we can very quickly solve this using dynamic programming. Uh, because we know that in our initial state, uh, we sort of only have uh, one possibility for our starting digit. And then from there, we can uh, construct you know, how many are going to be able to end in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, or 0, and then continue to solve that. And note that we have a special case when n was equal to 1, we have 10, but anytime n is greater than 1, we can never start with 5 because you can't construct a, uh, a number with you know n digits where n is greater than 1 if you start with 5 because you're just stuck there. Um, so that's just a special note that you'll have to return something special, you know, when n equals 1, return 10, otherwise implement our algorithm. So here is our C++ solution. We can see that we have a function, night dialer, which takes a single parameter, an integer n, which represents the number of digits, and returns a single integer, which represents the different number of distinct numbers that we can have that have n digits. So right at the top here, you can see we have uh, our special case. If n equals 1, uh, just return 10. And then we deal with our all our other cases. So uh, we have VVLL, which stands for a vector of vector of long longs. And then we're initializing that uh, to have the dimensions n plus 1 uh, for our first dimension, which is going to just be uh, the number of digits, and then 10, which is the different number of keys that we have in our keypad. Note that these are just type aliases. Uh, so LL is for long long, VLL is for a vector of long longs, and VVLL is for a vector of vector of long longs. And then we also have our macros here, as we usually do. So then we initialize the uh, first column or, or row of our two-dimensional vector uh, to all have the values 1, because when we only have one digit, uh, we only have a possible uh, one possibility ending in that current digit. And then for all of our other 
uh, rows, we are just going to plug in the dependencies that we uh, sort of laid out in our visual solution. So for a number ending in digit 0, uh, we are going to set that to be equal to the number of digits that previously in the previous row uh, ended in a 4 or a 6. And so we just plug all of these sort of recurrence relationships in like we just like we discovered before. And you can see that for 4 and 6, they depend on four different keys, whereas all the other ones uh, depend on two. And the only other thing we need to worry about is the modulus. So making sure that uh, we don't overflow on our long long. And then at the end, once we finish this second for loop, we just need to sum up the values that are in our nth row of our two-dimensional uh, vector. So it's pretty straightforward. It's not the uh, cleanest code, because there's a lot of repetition here. Uh, but thanks to Vlad, uh, who's an individual that works at Microsoft, he posted a solution also in C++ that also has the same time complexity, the time complexity of this solution being linear. Uh, but his solution was a, a lot more uh, idiomatic C++ and making use of some algorithms, and it's a lot nicer to look at. Maybe not as easy or as obvious to understand just by looking at it right away, uh, but here it is. So instead of, you know, handwriting them out, uh, you know, this row depends on this row, he just has set up a two-dimensional vector uh, where each index stores a vector of the uh, keys that depend are depended on. So at index 0 we depend on 5 and 6. On index 5 we don't depend on anything. And then we have our same function night dialer here and what Vlad has done is he set up uh, two different vectors instead of a two-dimensional vector. So we have dial uh, and dial 1. So basically what we're going to do is just store a single slice of our two-dimensional vector, dp vector, and then at the end of it, we're just going to uh, store what we calculated back into the first one and then repeat. So basically, you're just storing a single slice of your two-dimensional vector. The benefit of this is that even though the time complexity is the same, the space complexity uh, decreases from linear to constant. In the previous solution that I showed, because we have a two-dimensional vector that scales with our input n, uh, our, our space complexity is linear. But when you store just your two uh, vectors like this, this does not scale with your input n, so your space complexity is constant. And then what we do basically is just a fancier way of what we were doing before. So for n different digits, uh, we are going to loop through from 0 to 10 and then basically do the addition uh, based on these indices uh, with a lambda and the accumulate function. And at the end of each one of these steps, we have to reset uh, dial 1 uh, to be uh, dials so that you can see here we're using dial 1 as sort of our calculation that's based on dial um, and then we need to swap dial 1 to be dial at the beginning for the next iteration so that's how we can achieve that sort of one slice DP programming technique and at the end we just do the same thing that we did before uh, but instead of uh, hand rolling your own for loop you can use accumulate so this is a much nicer uh, solution in my opinion it's gonna get you a lot more points in an interview and uh, and yeah so uh, keep this in mind whether you're competing in a contest versus in an interview sort of what the kind what kind of code you want to write so and once again thanks to Vlad um, and I took a look at his profile and he actually has a link to a blog so I'll plug that for him uh, like I said he works at Microsoft and he has a blog called programmer coach where he posts uh, different articles on how to answer certain questions and different tips and techniques so be sure to check that out it was pretty neat when I took a look and on top of taking a look at Vlad's solution, I also noticed in the uh, forum for the posted solutions an interesting one. At the bottom here you can see uh, a post that says uh, linear time, constant space, DP solution plus Google interview question write-up. Um, to which I thought it was just going to be someone at Google um, plugging the fact that they work at Google and answering it how they would. But actually what it was, was it was a post talking about how this actually used to be a Google interview question that was used very commonly until at some point it got leaked and they blacklisted it. 
Um, and this post links to an article from someone who works at Google that used to ask the question uh, fairly often as a, an interview question, obviously. And he wrote a blog um, detailing what he considered to be sort of the steps of the question and, you know, different candidates getting to different points and how there's sort of four different levels. And if you get to the fourth level, that's sort of the ideal solution. Uh, so this is what uh, Alex Golek is the individual, and in his Medium blog, he posted, he has two posts. The first one is him talking about how he's going to start a series of these articles. And then the second one is this Google interview questions deconstructed uh, the Knights Dialer. So it seems like this is the first article in a number of articles that he's going to be reading, and the article is just fantastic in terms of a lot of candidates that are preparing for these technical interviews, they are able to get to a certain point, um, but they don't know how to improve after that point. And this uh, article basically uh, gives you tips at every single level. So I'm not going to go through the whole article. I recommend you to check it out. But at a high level, this is sort of what Alex was saying, is that you know he, he introduces the question, uh, which we don't need to do, and then the different levels are as follows. So at first, you need to just figure out how to get from one key to another which in the article he talks uh, sort of surprisingly that a lot of candidates even have trouble with this. Um, so a point that he makes throughout the article is don't assume that anything is too trivial to sort of state. Like there's a lot of candidates that stumble on really simple things. So just pointing out or, you know, stating something that you know how to do something uh, can get you a lot of points instead of just assuming that they expect every single candidate to know that. So that's level zero. That's not really one of the four levels, but the, the four levels are then recursively generating numbers uh, counting without counting, uh, which is using sort of the recurrence relation. It's not DP programming yet, but it's uh, an improvement on sort of the recursive solution. Uh, using memoization to turn sort of the exponential, the time complexity solution that you have that at that point in time to a linear time solution. And then the fourth is dynamic programming, which sort of highlights what Vlad's solution show, that you can go from a linear time complexity linear, space complexity linear, linear to a time complexity linear uh, space complexity constant. And then he has some uh, nice sort of diagrams in the interview and also posts different Python solutions at uh, each different level. So it's, it's a great article. There's tons of things that you can learn from it. And if this individual, Alex, is going to be posting you know future articles like this, I, I would definitely recommend you follow him on Medium. And uh, I'll try to post whenever uh, this individual posts articles like this because it's a, uh, as one of the comments on the lead code post said, it, uh, or maybe it was said in the post itself that it's a, a gold mine of information from someone who is actively uh, interview or being the interviewer in Google interviews. So once again, be sure to follow Alex. I'll leave a link in the description below and also be sure to check out uh, Vlad's blog at uh, programmercoach.com. Taking a look at the contests that are happening next week, it's a pretty light week. We only have uh, three contests. Two of them are on Saturday from Hacker Earth, the November Easy Contest, and in the evening, of course, the Weekly Lead Code Contest, number 110. And then we also have the continuation of the Code Chef November Long Challenge, which started this Friday and is going to end uh, late on Monday morning. So it's going to run for about a week more. And be sure to check out the November Long Challenge, because similar to the October long challenge, I'll be doing a video dump once that uh, contest is over. So I'll be choosing four or five problems from that contest and releasing them right when the contest is finished. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.